Uh, let me let me frame it up for for you and for okay. our listeners. Let's take a real look at the stakes and uh, and how this plays out. When we come into um, into the world as babies, even pre-verbally, the part of our brain that is uh, the the executive part of our brain that does that is has the love affair with the straight line that does the logicking and the reasoning. Mm -hmm. It's not even fully formed. It's actually not online until about 18 months old. Is this prefrontal cortex? What is fully engaged even in the womb in a preverbal state is the limbic brain. So we have three, broadly three uh, uh, tripartite brain structure. We have everyone is familiar with the the fight or flight, the startle fight or flight reptilian structure. That's what just, that's what runs our system. But then we have uh, another, uh, we have a, another brain called the limbic brain, and that brain is entirely visceral. It does not process anything in terms of logic, anything in terms of reason. It is only concerned with imagining and connecting and emotions. That part is fully present while we're in the womb, in the womb rather. So this is the part that requires, um, that can, creates uh, emotional attunements with mother and with society and with connection. This is the part that gives us our emotional aliveness. And is a, it is, as I said, an entirely visceral experience. And all mammals have this. If you look at little puppies playing, and you know, if you're playing tug of war with a puppy, that has nothing whatsoever to do with the survival of the species in terms of Darwinian terms. This is not a, um, a survival mechanism for hunting. This is pure play. Puppies playing with each other is pure aliveness and play. And that is unique only to mammals. Now what happens, um, in puppies, they do not have a prefrontal cortex. Human beings do have a prefrontal cortex. So around 18 months, that prefrontal cortex comes online and it starts to slice and dice reality in terms of logic and reason. This is good, this is not good, do this, do that. And we see it in our children as the terrible twos. No, 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 you start to individuate, you start to assess things in terms of, uh, in terms of the intellect. So what happens is the creative act is born in the body. All creativity is born in the body from the uh, limbic connection, the emotional and attunement connection, the playful connection. And it, hand in hand with the executive function, with the prefrontal cortex, that's the part that uh, opens the business, turns on the light, writes the script, does the rewrites, um, bakes the cake, drives the kids to school. That's the part that actually crafts the creative impulse. So unless both of them are present, you don't have a fully fledged uh, creative life. And because we as a society give a much, much more attention to the executive function, to learning to read and to write, if you just take a look now, at what happens in our schools across the country because we have lots of stresses, uh, 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 understandable, we have all sorts of economic stressors. And the first thing that gets cut is the arts program, the music program, the drama program, precisely the kinds of programs that, uh, that respond to the limbic na our limbic nature, the part of our brain function that makes us um, human we go from, instead of the humanities, we go to the strategies part. Uh, it's not because anyth anybody is doing anything bad or wrong, but it, we do have a disposition to honor the computational abilities, the, the um, logical and reasonable abilities of human beings. We value them over the emotional attunement. And so this, in my view, is a, um, it's a tragedy and it's also a crisis.